When President Olusegun Obasanjo encouraged local production of cement, the manager of Ibeto Cement Factory promised to flood Nigerian market with cement and drastically reduce the price of the product. Ibeto fulfilled his promise and flooded the country with cement. The result was that the price of cement crashed. This jolted Dangote cement and affected his business adversely. Aliko Dangote wrote a petition to former President Olushe Gunobasanjo kicking against the authority the federal government granted Ibeto to import 800,000 metric tons of cement. Former President Olushe Gunobasanjo issued a directive that Ibeto was not allowed to import cement into the country until it proved its investment in local production. Dangote was allowed to import cement. Thousands of staffs of Ibeto men were rendered jobless. When late President Umaru Yaradua succeeded Obasanjo, Ibeto in July 2007 applied for import allocation and it was granted. Once again, he flooded the country with quality cement and the prices crashed. Dangote Cement PLC quickly filed a suit alleging that Ibeto Cement Company is gaining undue advantage by the federal government. On its part, the federal government contended that Dangote Cement PLC is plotting to wipe out fair competition and create a monopoly in the industry and transform itself to the only cock that grows in Nigeria. But Ibeto fortified terms of settlement which were entered as consent judgment in the suit. In line with the consent judgment, it will continue to import 1.5 million metric tons of cement per annum for the period between 1st October 2007 and 30th of September 2019. This was in line with the federal government guarantee conveyed in a letter by the Ministry of Trade and Industry dated 5th June 2002. By the judgment, the federal government was to pay Ibeto Cement's company the sum of $40 million and 1.9 billion Naira. The amount is the verified claims by the Interministerial Committee of the Federal Government for losses suffered by Ibeto from the unjustified closure of his bargain plant between December 2005 and when it resumed operation in October 2007. But Dangote Cement PLC consented that its rights and interests were affected by the consent judgment. Dangote argued that the continuance of Ibeto Cement makes Dangote Cement expensive. However, the federal government and six of its agencies, which are the other defendants in the counter affidavit deposed to by one Emmanuel Joel, an assistant litigation officer in the law firm of Kenna Partners, argued that Dangote Cement PLC filed the suit with only one intention, to wipe out competition in cement business and become a monopoly. The federal government also contended that Dangote Cement has no locus in filing the suit as the matter did, didn't concern them. It averred that the suit instituted by Ibedo Cement against the federal government was not fraudulent. Furthermore, it argued that Dangote Cement was not a nominee or agent of government agencies which are defendants in the suit and is not acting on their behalf. It argued that Dangote Cement's PLC is not an agency of federal government with the statutory mandate of administering, managing or enforcing task compliance, therefore lacking the local standing to commence or maintain the legal action and seek the reliefs in the case. Ibeto took Cement to another level. It signed a contract agreement of $368 million with a China company, Zhejiang Sinoma Engineering Design and Research Institute Company Limited, to produce 6,000 metric tons of cement in Enugu State, Southeast Nigeria. The contract covered crushing limestone mining, cement raw materials to packaging, shipped to the whole process, and a 45 megawatts captive power plant covering engineering design equipment, steel, material supply, civil works, installation, commissioning and personal training. 
Already, Ibeto Company operates a similar facility in Port Harcourt, River State, which produces 6,000 tons of cement. Nangote was afraid that his dominance and monopoly of cement production will be destroyed by Ibeto. Ibeto is a billionaire and one of the wealthiest men in Africa. As of 2013, he was estimated to be worth about $3.7 billion by Ventures Africa. His Petrochemical Industries Limited, which manufactures oil lubricants and other various petroleum products, both for local and international trade, has the largest liquid storage facility for petroleum products in Nigeria, with a large capacity to store over 60,000 metric tons, and is located at the Papa Wharf and the Ibru Jetty Complex in Lagos, Nigeria. President Buhari came into power. Ibeto Company applied for foreign exchange from the CBN but was denied. Dangote applied and was granted. He has continued to enjoy all manner of weather. Like Dangote did during the Obasanjo regime, he was said to have approached his Fulani brother. Buhari banned Ibeto cement. Following the closure of Ibeto cement by Buhari, the prices of cement jumped from 1,500 naira to 2,500 naira, and Dangote is smiling to the bank. Ibeto's account is frozen. Dr. Cletus Ibeto has been arrested several times, questioned by security agencies, harassed, humiliated, and intimidated. There is no law in the Nigerian law books that Ibeto Company has breached. What then is his crime? Why this mistreatment? It's time. Have you subscribed? Get updates. Anywhere. On the go. AKTV Naija. Making communication easy.